What is going on guys, Joey Franzo here with Flex Training Systems and we're bringing you one of those OG videos where it's nothing but my voice and some memorable moments, some pictures we got going on here in the background. Um, today I had a busy day, I had to wake up early to do something with my brother so I didn't really have time to do like a real stream because I still have to work and I'm, I actually am behind still. But I want to get this out. It's something that I try to do consistently, like forever. <laughs> I think I'm. Uh, I think I might have only missed one or two weeks in the last uh, five years, and I'm just trying to keep the streak going. But anyway, today um, I am going to talk about a scenario that I'm sure many of you have dealt with, or seen, or you know, kind of experience, and. Um, you know, I haven't made a video like this in a long time. I've made videos on this topic, but specifically this, uh, like today I was inspired by a scenario with one of my lifters. Um, I don't have a lot of newer lifters. Most of my lifters are like, mm, maybe more advanced or they've just been with me for a while. Um, so they get it. They've gone to the end of the world and back, you know, they know what's up. Uh, but I have a couple that started with me this year, and um, I try to, you know, sometimes, sometimes the newer lifter gets in if they're really determined and they wanna, you know, they wanna improve, um, and they they end up with me, right? Maybe all my coaches are packed, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I, like, I had just so happen to have a light week. Let me take you, right? So, the cool thing about working with newer lifters is relatively newer lifters is that I get to um, go through things that if I were to only work with the best of the best top lifters these scenarios wouldn't really happen or show up because they are already beyond that point they've already like mentally gotten to a point where this stuff doesn't really bother them but this is all part of the process and everybody goes through these things and I have actually experienced this which is why I'm able to speak on it now, before we get into the specific topic um, today, I don't even know how I'm going to title this video yet. A lot of you guys, I did a, uh, a little like questionnaire thingy, like what do you guys want me to talk about in today's video? A lot of you guys are asking me about the USVI situation and how the lifters are lifting. I don't want to speak about it anymore because when I tried to make a post on it on social media, they told me that the some of the information was wrong. So I just took their name out and I said, I'm just not going to talk about it because I don't, I, I guess I don't know anything. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how it's working or what's going on and I'm just going to leave it. My lifters have a way to go to Worlds and I'm going to, we're going to handle this Worlds and then we're just going to see what's in front of us. Um, it stressed me and all of us out a lot and I'm just done with it. <laughs> like I have too many blessings in life to be stressed about it. I just want to handle business. Um, if someone would like to reach out to me to communicate with me, that's fine, but I've exhausted my options and I'm just going to focus on, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to speak anything. I don't want anyone to say that I got information wrong. So I'm just going to speak on things that I know best. And that's this video here. Um, so if you're, if you're one of the many people, which is surprising how many people want to know about that stuff, um, I don't know. I'm sure it'll come out soon. I'm sure someone will say something somewhere, but I just, like, I don't know anything. And <laughs> like I said, we just want to do worlds and then figure it out. Um, okay, so today, what are we talking about? Today we're talking about, I'm just going to paint a picture for you guys, right? And you guys will get it. Maybe the title of the video will kind of like give a hint. So you have, so you have a lifter. Um, this lifter in particular, you know, they did some stuff that would drain their gym performance, right? They dra drains their gym performance and they go into the gym and maybe there's a lift that they're very uh, attached to emotionally, right? Maybe it's your squat, your bench, your deadlift, whatever. Doesn't matter. Everybody's got like one lift that like if they don't do well on it, it really affects them mentally or, um, you know, they just are, they're so like hyper focused on it or it's their best lift. So they, they tie it to their identity as a lifter. So if that lift is particularly down, they think that they're worthless, right? Which is not the case at all. But it is normal to feel that way in the beginning. So they go to the gym, and maybe they're really taxed. They did something outside the gym that, that beat them down. And, um, you know, they attempt a weight, and they fail, right? They fail the weight. And mentally, this really, really messes with them. Now, the real cause is because 
there are there are outside factors that are affecting them and preventing them from doing what they need to do. I always say you have to pay your dues. If you don't pay your dues, you're not going to have the strength to do what you want to do. It, anytime you increase frequency, change your energy expenditure, you know, you don't recover, right? You do, you know, you're just not hydrated at all, whatever. Um, you're going to have to pay for that. You're going to have to do those things in order to be strong. You don't just get to be strong all the time. And if you're strong for many weeks in a row, you have to pay for that as well. You need to have a down week. You need to take a breather, let things heal up, recover, take a little deload, and then continue pushing up, right? So lifter comes in the gym. They don't have it today. They try to hit the weight. It messes with them mentally. And um, so what they do is they try again right or they add weight and they try again and th I believe that this happens because mentally they refuse to leave the day defeated they refuse to be beaten by this weight and they need to prove it to themselves they need to know that they can do it because they can refuse to accept the reality in which there was ever a day or an instant where they could not lift that weight now this is to me a very uh it's a younger way of thinking it is a it is a less mature way of thinking and handling the situation because because the consequences of doing such a thing are multiple fold <laughs> it could be you're digging the hole deeper your recovery debt even deeper um and now you're going to have to take a longer time trying to recover and get out of that than you otherwise would have Two, you could potentially get hurt, and then we're going down like a whole another road. You're not even going; it's not even deload and get back to training. It's, de it's now you got to deload and you got to rehab and you got to, you know, decompress. You got to do all kinds of stuff. Or you got to wait till things heal up, right? Depending on the severity of it. And they try this weight again. They get they get stapled. They fail on squat. They get smashed on bench, or they just don't move it on deadlift, right? Now they're going down this spiral of just mental everything, like just turmoil. They're going crazy. They're like, oh, my God, like I, with, what's happening? They start overthinking like crazy. They're second-guessing their program. They're second-guessing their, um, their stance. They're trying to change their shoes. You know, they're tr maybe they're trying to blame their coach. Maybe they're trying to like, you know, they're just not thinking about like why like this is happening. They don't understand. And in the moment, the emotions get them. So they go crazy, right? They're doing all these things. Then maybe they start crying. Maybe they go, you know, just make an emotional post and delete it really quick after. Like they literally just self-destruct, right? Or or they like delete their IG, go MIA. I've seen all kinds of things happen, right? Um, and it, and it, it is not no, like some of those things are very extreme and maybe that's not normal, but it is normal to feel emotional sometimes when you don't understand when life doesn't go your way in general and things don't pan out the way that you are planning. Right. This person came into the situation. It, 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 it doesn't matter that it's lifting. It could be the same thing in life. You go into a situation with an expectation. You fail to meet that expectation. So you get down on yourself and you get mad. Right. You get emotional. When in reality, you had no business having that expectation for that day. You should not have even attempted that way. And you knew this warming up because you saw it on your warm-ups. You're like two, three, four, five warm-ups in. Maybe like four or five warm-ups in. And you're like, oh, shit, I don't have it today. Let me go ahead and try this anyway. I, I, you know, I could force this way. There's no way I won't be able to hit this way, even on my worst day. Sometimes that reality is hard to swallow. And I have seen very, very advanced lifters do this. Like they get super emotional in the moment. They just get caught out, right? They get caught out and then they they do something like this and then they end up paying for it with an injury. And it's very sad when it happens because it should not happen. It just shows that they don't have the, you know, they're not equipped um, emotionally, mentally to, ha to handle a situation like this yet. Maybe they thought they were. They thought they were invincible. You know, they had they had a certain set of life circumstances that allowed them to get away with it for a little while. Um, and not having to pay pay their dues as much as they think they do, but eventually it always catches up to them. And now you know they're doing crazy stuff, right? They're trying to like they're trying to max out, or they'll go in the morning, they'll try to train to pull a single, and they they don't even move it, and then they come back at night. Now they're completely disrupting their recovery pattern. They're going all over the place to try to force it, and it's just a young way of doing things. It's just not something that should ever be done. And you know. If you want to take a positive from it, they might learn from that down looking down the road and say, "Hey, you know, this is this is the exact behavior that I should not be doing." Um 
you know, and I should probably like learn from this and, and just not let it happen in the future. So in that, you know, I should always try to take the positive away from things. You might be able to take a positive away from it in that sense, right? So, so the lifter now, you know, they're in the session. They, they get stabled by the way, they get defeated by the way, and now they're really emotional and they're, they're paying for it emotionally, physically, whatever. Like I said, this is a very young way of doing things. You guys, ha I guarantee you, one of you guys listening has done something like this, right? It is okay and normal to do this. I, y you're listening to a guy that has seen this a gazillion times. And I have taken the person that was that person and transformed them into one of the best lifters in the nation or the world, right? I have I've done this on numerous occasions. So I am telling you, you do not have to stay this way. You do not have to, you know, end up going down. I've seen people fizzle out from too many of these. They have too many days like this they don't understand and they just fizzle out and they don't do powerlifting anymore. They do other stuff, right? My entire page is literally, it's like a freaking goldmine of information and it should help people not go down that dark path right um i would like to think that many of you guys have have heard me give advice on this very topic and has kept you in the game and and you know uh, i guess i should say what the solution is and what you should what you should do before i get to the end but so the right thing to do and this is a this is a level that i reached a couple years ago maybe three or four years ago and it's been it's allowed me to just have such a much better relationship with powerlifting, such a much better relationship um, as a coach, just coaching that much better, having more empathy for people. Just empathy is the number. Empathy and patience. If you have empathy and patience, you're gonna be, you and man, you could be such a good coach. But not everybody has it. They just don't have the capacity to have empathy and patience. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's another topic. But anyway. Uh, Let's say you come in the gym. Let's say I come in the gym, right? And I'm warming up on squat. My best lift. My squat defines me, right? Everybody knows me for my big squat, right? And I specifically remember one of these days that I had like that. It's crazy. It's crazy how these like crazy, impactful, emotional days, they are embedded in your personality. You remember them. And I will always use this moving forward, right? I will learn this life lesson going forward. I remember I was at Barbell Brigade and I warmed up on squat and I was this was a, this is back in the day so I was not that strong. I think my max was probably like 600 maybe less, maybe like 560, I don't know. And I just remember I was warming up and I was like, "All right. I am really beat up. I am really beat up. 475 is heavy. Um I need to deload today and I need to lower the weights and cut a set, right? And I made that audible, and that was the time. And, and, and the reason why I remember it so much is because I had such a mental struggle of doing this. This is like literally 2015. And I had such a mental struggle of trying to do this. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to back up, but I know I should. I have to. I have to. There's no way. I have no juice today. I have no sauce. I have to I have to chill out, right? And I, and I humbled myself. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to screw it. Like, I am i don't need to squat big today. Screw the gram. Screw the post. Screw what people think of me. I'm just going to chill, right? So I dialed myself back, and I ended up deloading like that. And, and I just always remember that. I didn't, And then in the future, whenever this happened, whenever this happens, uh, for some reason, I'm usually lifting on kilos. <laughs> and I'll feel beat. I'll be, feel beat. I'll feel roasted. My body's just like, man, I need to rest. And nowadays, if that happens, oh, no problem at all. We lower the weight. We maybe we call an audible. Maybe we lower some reps. Maybe we lower some sets. We get the work in, and then we just move on. Go hit some accessories. Talk to the homies. Whatever. That's it. Um, you know, does not bother me at all. Does not affect me at all because I have not only experienced it myself, but I have the foresight through what I've done historically, and I have an enormous like sample size of lifters that are going through things like this all the time and I am constantly seeing I have seen the, like I'm seeing the lit the, the the lifespan of a lifter play out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times now thousands and thousands of times now with the amount of lifters I've worked with I've seen it played out I've literally seen it so I know I can I can just zoom out I can look at their timeline the, this entire lifters lifting career and I can see you know where where they were you know at their strengths their tops their lows and how they ended up 
right? There's lifters that have been through crazy things, and they've come out of it and, you know, been been some of the best. There's lifters that have a, had a very good career, just never have any issues, and they just never get hurt, and they're chilling, right? They, there's also people that may have never done this because they just mentally have gone through some other shit in life that has taught them this very similar life lesson, right? And I think if we can get to a point – so that's why it comes with understanding. As a coach, I need to have patience, and I need to explain to the lifter – the reason why you aren't feeling the way that you're feeling is going to be because of these potential reasons. But, you know, so make sure you have these things that you control outside the gym on point, And then I will go take a look at your training and I'll see if this is planned or not. For example, one of my girls, what's up, Desiree? I don't know if you listen to my vid videos, <laughs> but I just added multiple weeks, uh, days a week of conventional for her because she has really, really good conventional form and she can tolerate it. Um, and today she's like, wow, I'm feeling a little bit beat on conventionals as normal. So I just pull up her training, go look at it. Oh, yeah, we we haven't done two times a week, Della, before I brought it in. You know, you got to pay your dues for what you did last week. It's normal for you to feel this way. I think we should commit. You know, it's perfectly planned, you know, and there's no reason to be alarmed. Boom. Mentally, she's going to be good now because now she knows the reason why she feels that way. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration comes from is that people just get so caught up in the moment and their emotion and they don't understand why they don't get it right sometimes i try to respond you know i'm pretty responsive you know i tell you guys like my lifters if i'm not there to answer you right away on on uh, messenger just dm me and if i'm not like super busy i can take a look right um doesn't happen all the time it's rare but I'll, i don't mind doing that sometimes and and there may be times when i can save a lifter if i catch them in the in the moment if I can catch it, it's hard. It's like, you know, obviously I have a life, they have a life, that we're doing things at different times of day. If you can catch it in that moment, I might be able to prevent them from going down that path of, of just like emotional turmoil. If I can catch it right then, right? I know a lot of you guys, you take what, you really trust me and you take the words that I say, um, you know, like to heart and very seriously. And that's what allows me to be effective, right? Because you guys trust me and you believe in what I'm saying, things like that. So, um, but I can't always, sometimes I'm not going to be able to get to it right away. So especially with newer lifters, they they go through this and then they have to kind of go through it and they're going to feel those emotions and they're going to remember what it feels like. But over time, you know, just from me communicating with them and them being a lifter and being more experienced, they're going to understand, okay, Joey says that if I feel this way in the gym, there's got to be a good reason for it. That's, I would like to know the reason, or maybe they're like, I don't care the reason I'm going to do the right thing and i'm going to dial back i'm going to take what i have for the day i am going to make a shirt one day that says take what you have <laughs> maybe that's not the best shirt i don't know but i want to i want to just take what you have what is your body giving you for the day if that is what it's giving you in in the range of weights you're supposed to work then go with that and if it's not like like here's the thing great thing about RPE. You will always be able to stay within that RPE because it goes based on how you're feeling on the day. You will always be able to do it. There is always an appropriate you can't be wrong. You literally can't be wrong unless you go out of that range. If that makes sense. And I know this is hard for some people because the way it works is like you're going based on feel. So if I put a at RPE seven on paper you will always be able to do RPE 7, even if you're beat to hell, even if you're destroyed. You could always do it. You can always do it. Now, you may overdo it on the first rep or the first set, whatever, but you can always adjust and fix it and make it right. So I think it's very important to understand. You know, I mean, you don't even need to know. Some people just they don't even care. They just need to know what do I do when I feel this way. And then you need to pull. This is also a skill. This is like such a valuable thing. We're 19 minutes in. If you made it this far, you about to get the sauce right now. Okay. It's not many people get this. All right. In life, when you are emotional, when you feel beat to shit, when you are going through it, when someone is pissing you off, if you have the ability to pull yourself out of that situation, take your, to use your logical brain and pull yourself away from your primal self and you say, I feel X, Y, Z. I am, I am standing outside of my body right now, staring at myself being mad. <laughs> Why am I being mad? What is the benefit of me being mad and emotional? What, you know, what, are, what is the right move to do here to begin to move towards making things better? 
to fix what is pissing me off, what is making me sad, what is getting me emotional. That is an incredibly hard skill. That is an incredibly hard skill because everybody has limits, right? Everybody has an emotional limit, you know. I try to think of myself as like I'm a freaking, let's say I'm a Jedi, right? And the pinnacle of this is Master Yoda. And there are times when I felt like there's nothing that's going to happen to me in my own lifting that's going to piss me off or make me mad. Um, and then occasionally, once every once in a while, there may be something that bothers me. And it shouldn't. But And I'm like, I'm still feeling this way. I have not yet reached like that pinnacle, just like, you know, incredibly emotionally sound zen place like i'm just not there i'm just i have a little bit more to go you know, have a little bit more to go because i still this still is bothering me a little bit i'll do the right thing but i still feel it right and it's okay it's okay to feel that way sometimes you know your body the, like everything that we do i believe is like evolutionary there's a reason we feel the way that we feel um, but it's not always like the right time to feel that way so we have to like gather ourselves understand what's going on and make the right decision there. So you go in the gym, you lift the weight. Holy shit, I don't have it today. I'm going to lower the weight. I'm going to take what I have. I'm going to communicate that to my coach. And when he's going to come up with the plan, she's going to come up with the plan. And we're going to do the best thing going forward. Maybe I need a deload. Maybe I need to, you know, maybe this has been going on for too long. And I'm consistently having a bad day on this particular day. And it's, it, you know, it's degrading my overall performance and it needs to go. Maybe, um, you know, that thing that I did before going to the gym on this particular day, I need to stop doing that because that's draining the session to a point where I'm unable to have really much of a session. There's a lot of different things. I'm just giving you guys reasons. And then, you know, you don't let it affect you emotionally. I know that's easier said than done, way easier said than done. And you handle business. You're going to leave the session knowing I did the right thing. And what I tell people is sometimes the best path to move forward is not always adding more weight to the bar there's more there's there's a lot of different things you need to do to, to, to move forward and there's going to be times when it's not going in and working hard it's actually doing less it's working smarter not harder sometimes all right that is like crazy good um that's a crazy good you know life lesson that you could apply to anything it's 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 the a very old school mentality it's just going and destroy yourself and leave the gym dead, right? You're not going to last doing stuff like that. You can do let. I try to, I like to try to think that um at this point in my coaching career, I try to make lifting relatively like enjoyable and I don't try to there's going to be times when we push a little too hard for too long, occasionally towards the end of a meet prep maybe. Um and it's kind of normal to feel that way. Um, but then you get the big payoff at the end. But I try to make it fun. I try to make it so, you know, you're feeling relatively good. And if you take care of yourself outside the gym, you're going to have a higher chance of having better sessions. Um, it's a very advanced, very advanced way of thinking to um, to be able to pull yourself out of that emotional state and make the right decision. Um, and it takes time to get there. All right. And understand that it's not going to happen overnight. It's okay to feel what you're feeling. It's normal, and a lot of lifters have done it, right? People only post the happy stuff on IG. Very few people post, like, what they're actually going through. And I guarantee you, man, I know so much shit about people. Like, everybody goes through it. Everybody has bad days. Everybody doesn't want to lift. Everybody wants to quit. You know, things like that happen. It's just normal. Um, so... Don't let it bleed out into the rest of your day. If you have a bad session in, at 12 p.m., then at 8 p.m. you shouldn't be thinking about it. Just move on, you know. And this is something that I'm still working on. Just like the bigger things in my life, get, like the bigger flex gets, the more business I have to handle, the more ideas that I have, the more lifters I manage. Um, I focus so much on those things that 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 kind of like anxiety feeling never leaves me. And then and then the whole day I'm just like my head is spinning and that's that's uh something that i'm working on you know it's different like the lifting part this is easy stuff you know what i mean um for me and that's why i that's why i teach it and coach it um uh, but as the thing the life lessons that i've learned through dealing with stuff like this that has allowed me to just kind of like scale my ability to handle stress um and you know lift th this 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 form of lifting stress it is a form of stress um, but in the grand scheme of things, when you think about it, 
it's not going to affect the health of anyone that's close to you. You know, you're okay for the most part. It's not like you're, um, you're lit, you're exercising. You know what I mean? Like, like, like there's other things in life, like making sure your loved ones are healthy and things like that, that are probably more important than how we're feeling at that particular moment in the gym. But because we are so tied up in this, because we are so emotional, you know, we feel like it's our whole world. Right. So I understand. Um, I get it. I, hope you guys feel like like we're here for you guys like there's a community here like we all go through this um and it's normal it's normal stuff you just got to get to like it'll be it'll make you tough over time you're gonna learn from it and then when your emotions want to mess with things you're gonna make the right calculated move as opposed to breaking down um that being said stay safe you know do the, do the listen to your body you know that you guys have been listening to me for a while you know the right thing to do you know what the right thing to do is you just gotta but you just gotta listen to a little voice in your head um it's okay to it's okay to take the l sometimes lose the battle but not the war okay whatever you gotta do to win the war just don't don't lose the war if you get hurt you lost the war <laughs> and even then maybe not because you see the war is for the war is your whole lifetime anyway i really hope you guys are able to take something away from that um again I feel like I'm a little bit more direct um, and and I get the point across better when I do these videos because I don't have stream going. It's just me. Um, but anyway, uh, if you were able to take something away from this video, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, let me get a hashtag just win. Hashtag just win in the comments down below. Um, I'm going to try, if you made it this far, I am going to try, probably not, I should have done this at the beginning of the video, but on the 18th of September, I am going to try to do a workshop. If you are interested in this workshop, uh, comment below, but I did a, um, a, a lot of people have already emailed me about it, and um, actually no, I can't do it, I can't do it on the 18th. Sorry, scratch that. Nope, 18's not happening. I'll be at states. I'll be at state championships. Just let me know if you're interested. Let me know if you're interested. Maybe I'll do it next Wednesday. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let me know. Um, and there's already like 60 plus people that are in line for the last one. But you might as well get in there. Maybe I'll open up. Maybe I'll do 30-30. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Talk to you in the next one. Peace. Bye.